couple of updates on Full Gear. This is the full card. John Moxley, Eddie Kingston, I quit match. FTR versus the Young Bucks. If the Young Bucks lose, they will never challenge for the AEW Tag Team titles again. Ikaru Shida versus Nyla Rose. Cody versus Darby Allin. We have a world title eliminator finale. Kenny Omega versus Hangman Page. Jericho versus MJF, where if MJF wins, he joins the inner circle. Or he may join the inner circle. He's allowed to. Elite deletion match, Matt Hardy versus Sammy Guevara, which is a cinematic match, I believe, that has already been taped. I saw them both on the show last night. That tells me nobody died. That makes me feel better. Orange Cassidy versus John Silver. And the buy-in, the pre-show match, Orange Cassidy, John Silver moved to the main show. We now will get Serena Deeb defending the NWA title against Allison K, which is a fascinating match. It would have been more fascinating like two decades ago when people really cared about titles, but Serena Deeb is an AEW wrestler who is the NWA champion who is defending the title against somebody who just left the NWA. That's your buy-in match. As I noted last night on Observer Radio, Matt Jackson has a partially torn MCL and a thinning of the ACL, which is considered a slight tear. So he is injured. That's why they've been doing the storyline with his ankle. So basically, for those of you that are expecting, like, the big, all these high spots, crazy, boom, 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 that's not going to be this first Young Bucks versus FTR match. This will be a very psychology-laden match, which may be one of the reasons that they added... The stipulation that if the Young Bucks don't win, they can never challenge again. This match is going to be all about drama. Matt Jackson can barely move on his ankle as a storyline. Nick is going to have to do all of the work. They're at a heavy disadvantage. They've added their own disadvantage by saying that they will never challenge for the titles again if they don't win. This match is all about psychology. Not saying it's not going to be a great match. It's not going to be spectacular. I mean, Nick Jackson's healthy. He's going to do all sorts of crazy stuff. But this will be more akin to one of those New Japan Young Bucks matches where Matt was selling his back and could barely move for half the match. Nick's doing all the work, and they're putting all the psychology into the match. So that's the update on that. And we're looking for your thoughts on everything here today. Text messages 425-780-7566. You can give us a call toll-free 844-913-2727. That'll be later. Don't do that yet. And Brian at WrestlingObserver.com, at Semper and at Brian Alvarez on Twitter. Mike, your thoughts on the two shows last night? Well, also add in the other asterisks to the uh, tag team title match that uh, Tully Blanchard is now banned from ringside for that match as well, too. So there's another thing that they've added on to that as well. Um, I thought both shows were, were okay in their own ways. I don't know if NXT really was able to follow up as well off of Halloween Havoc as NXT did, but NXT is, or I'm sorry, AEW, but AEW is pushing towards full gear, and I'm ready for it. That's the one thing about the show was it was okay, but that's okay. They were in like kind of in a, got the landing gear out, and they were kind of heading right into this Saturday night, and this card is super stacked, and they did nothing to drive me away from wanting to see it. Eddie Kingston and John Moxley was the best thing by far on both shows, I think. It was really the standout. Um, probably the biggest takeaways on NXT were Cameron Grimes, uh, being scared still, um, continuing, uh, the story from last week where uh, hopefully the zombie referee isn't a thing week after week after week, and he's not looking over his shoulder week after week. And that and Shotzi Blackheart crying over her tank, um, maybe, Probably those two things overshadowed some of the more, you know, physically impressive things on the show, like Tony Storm being a star <laughs> and hopefully uh, continuing to be a star in NXT. Uh, I thought that was really good, but I thought both shows kind of clicked off some boxes. I'm not sure as much as we were talking yesterday if they're going to be as badly hurt in the ratings as initially we may have thought since everything really seemed to be in a holding pattern and last night uh, it seemed to be very clear that we would be going into today still without a a president uh elect uh, that that got called so uh if people started giving up on the news last night and just wanted to settle into wrestling i wouldn't be too surprised at all but i guess we're going to find out here in about an hour 
I thought these shows were very good. Although, although, NXT's booking decisions baffle me. I mean, Get I'll just give cute. you one example here. So, the opener on NXT was Ember Moon and Dakota Kai. I'm watching this match, and the announcers are talking about how NXT, their women's division, is the best division anywhere on the planet. we got so many great women here. And, I mean, they have great women in the NXT women's division. And I'm watching this match, and Ember looks great. Dakota Kai looks great. They're tearing it up in there. And then, all of a sudden, Raquel jumps up on the apron. She distracts Ember Moon. Dakota Kai hits a kick and her go-to kick and she beats Ember Moon. And I was, I like almost fell off my chair. I know so many people listening are like, who cares, Brian? Whatever, it doesn't matter. All of these things to me, they do matter. Ember Moon was gone with a torn Achilles. They didn't even know if she was going to be able to come back. And I have nothing against Dakota Kai. She's a great wrestler. But Dakota Kai has been in and out of the title picture for a year now. And Ember Moon comes back, and granted, she didn't cut the best promo, but you know what? The fans forgave her, and they loved her, and she's been great in the ring, and she's got fire, and she's new, and when I look at everything, I mean, I don't know what they're doing next week with Rhea Ripley, but my guess is that Rhea Ripley's climbing the ladder, and she's going to get beaten next week, or there's going to be some sort of schmoz. I don't think Rhea Ripley is leaving with the title next week. I could be wrong. But when the announcers are putting over how... Dakota Kai is now in line for another shot at the title. I'm like, what? Again, nothing personal, but I've been watching Dakota Kai in and out of the title picture for a year. Ember Moon's back. She's hot. It's like, let's pull the trigger on her. But instead, Raquel gets involved. Let's get some heat. And this is the thing about this NXT show that this is why... You know, nine times out of ten, when we watch both shows and Vinny and I say, which one did we like better? Nine times out of ten, it's AEW. And it's because of things like this. There's no way with this talent roster that NXT has that they shouldn't be having these these blow-away shows that get me excited and get me excited about new matches and new feuds. But it's Amber gets beaten. Distraction finish. Shotzi's tank gets run over. And she cries. I mean, she had a bigger flip out than I've ever seen. And this is no joke. No one in the history of WWE has ever lost a title and been more upset than Shotzi was when her tank was run over last night. Well, here's the thing. Here's a comparison that I don't think they would want. It kind of reminded me of the Bob Backlund thing. We got his belt crushed and he was going nuts crying. Now, this may be more of an emotional reason because of her brother. The problem is they didn't drive that home enough. Not at all. So it just looked like she freaked out way, way too much over... A wrestling thing. And it's like Impact used to do. Okay, yeah, you told us that this tank meant something to her. But she's never told me that. Uh, we've never had any angles teasing the destruction of the tank. Anyway, back in a moment. Observer Live. If you love these video clips, head down there to the bottom right-hand side of the screen and click Join. For just $7.99 per month, you get full access to all of the episodes. Over 300 at current count. Full-length episodes of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, and Figure Four Daily with both Lance Storm and Filthy Tom Lawler. You can also hit that subscribe button, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows are available.